Howdy, uh, I'm Elk Rath. I run this channel. You've uh, met me previously in another video. Uh, I have since then recovered from that situation and back at it. I apologize in advance. I'm not really making any music right now. I'm in the process of building my secondary setup and I'm lacking a few of the last bit and the last components I need to get everything hooked up and running properly. Uh, a Friday I went through and got all four of my wisdom teeth extracted and apparently I was living in so much pain that it was instant relief so I decided instead of wasting my entire week uh, uh, trying to recover I'm just gonna start recording some stuff and today I want to talk about something that has completely changed the way that I approach what I like doing which is making noise let's be honest I'm not quite a musician yet uh, maybe one day. And that product is the Mod Dwarf from Mod Devices. I'm sure some of you already know them from the Mod Duo X, which is the bigger brother of what I was able to snag. Uh, what I could afford to snag at the time. And I will be 100% pursuing getting a Mod Duo X at some point down the road. I love this dwarf. I'm going to apologize in advance for this video. Uh, I'm not a particularly fluent video editor and I'm attempting to get my DSLR to film the majority of the Mod Dwarf demo. And my goal is to just kind of walk you through what the Mod Dwarf is, uh, how to utilize it, what the GUI is like, uh, how to map parameters, uh, how to send out MIDI messages. And that might be a little advanced for this video, so I may just tailor it down and, and focus more on the effects that I use and how it changes the sound. For reference, I am uh, I was a big pedal hound. I love effects. I'm a big reverb, big delay type of person, and I still get all of that, plus the ability to experiment with pretty much anything. Uh, Mod Dwarf is interesting. Uh, it's a great piece of hardware. The physical interface to me personally, I love it. I just jive with it. It's easy to understand. Um, may not be for everybody, uh, but I'll tell you that I get every single sound that I was getting from my Strymon pedals uh, that I was coming after and I actually just sold those off recently to finance a new synthesizer purchase, uh, which unfortunately because it's in my secondary setup I have yet to really dig into that one, which I'm sure I will down the road. So without further ado, I suppose I'll uh, move over to the other table here and get to work on showing you how this thing works. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the Mod Dwarf. And uh, right now I have it hooked up to my pedal board. And, uh, well, I guess I should say I have created a pedal board, which hopefully you can see on my DSLR. And uh, so I'm going to play a little bit of raw sound here coming out of my Hydrosynth. Pretty nice, uh, pretty plain. All right. And uh, my DeepMind. Those are the raw sounds coming out of that. Obviously, the Deep Mind has its own internal effects running right now, so uh, I'm not going to use that as a comparison in the meantime. Um, so, what can the Mod Dwarf do in terms of sound quality and uh, effects? Well, on this pedal board here, I have a uh, very large pedal board set up. And this is going to have four reverbs. And these are Shimmer reverbs. And these are from Shiro. And this is the Shiro Verb Mark II. Probably my favorite uh, reverb out of this thing. Uh, and the fact here that I can just run four of them in parallel, along with two delays and a stereo something or other. I think it's like a flanger. I don't know. But it does really good stereo separation. 
Um, and I really like Shiro's effects and I highly recommend them. Um, so I guess, uh, why don't we turn these bad boys on? Now I've already mapped these, at least some of the controls. Primarily the controls are going to be to turn things on and off, which you can see as I press buttons here, flip through my pages, and we can turn these guys on. Now I assigned some parameters already. Realistically, this was just to give a sound demo. And as you noticed on that fifth page, which is the fifth plugin I have controlled, I've returned back to the main page. Uh, you may or may not be able to see that, but that is what's happening. So let's go ahead and try that hydrosynth out one more time here and let's see how the tone changed. Sorry about that, I've been uh, had a little bit of a clipping issue on that, and that was my bad on the, uh, the recording here. So I'm going to turn down the gain a little bit, and uh, we'll try out the uh, DeepMind 12. Very, very nice. Um, I really, really love the sound that could come out of this. Now, you may or may not be able to hear this in my monitoring headphones. Surprisingly, I'm unable to hear this right now, but I am struggling with a ground hum right now, and I've done everything in my power to kind of rectify this and uh, to no avail. Uh, there's something going on in my setup that is causing me to have this last bit of noise uh, and, I'm, and I'm struggling a bit to get it handled. So hopefully this week I have some new gear coming in, uh, most notably a medical grade isolation uh, transformer and I think it should help. The issue I think that I'm experiencing is I run a combo of power in my house. So I'm a hybrid with solar and city. So everything's connected to the grid and it may be causing some actual noise in my electrical all around. So I'm hoping a isolation transformer will rectify any sort of dirty current that I have running through my house. Um, that being said, looking at the amount of plugins that I have on here, I have two delays each being run independently for on the left and right channel coming in from the Mod Dwarf. And uh, I have those set to a quarter and an eighth beat, I guess, for the delay. Um, and they run independently and fed into this, uh, I don't know, stereo separator, I guess is what I would call it. And on top of that, I have four of these shiver reverbs. They have very similar parameters in terms of decay and pre-delay and stuff like that. But as you can tell, there's, well, I suppose you can't, but if you, on my mappings here, each one of these is hitting a different uh, interval. So I have a negative octave, a negative fifth, a positive fifth, and a positive octave. And it just makes a really beautiful beautiful sound uh, really love it and uh, honestly I've been able to sell off pretty much everything else in terms of effects maybe I'm a little bit more simple uh, but this pedal board here I've got 
you know, seven plugins running and I'm not even tapping 40%. I'm at like 30.9%, 31% of my uh, total CPU usage. And that's, uh, that's phenomenal. Just a beautiful noise. Uh, I mean, this thing is this thing's great. And not only that, uh, I'm able to actually run MIDI, which is this guy here. Uh, oops, I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. This is designed to be used at the PC, and so sometimes you'll run into an issue like that if you're running. But luckily, the pedal reloads right back in. Anyway, this is the MIDI. So if you have a MIDI anything, which there's several MIDI utilities here. Uh, you could just drag and drop them, drag your MIDI in, and then if you want to, you could come in and assign a parameter, let's say it's a MIDI, and you should be able to control it using you know, your MIDI in and out. In fact, I use it in a lot of my tracks when you hear this FM style uh, arpeggio come in that's usually on a random playthrough in whatever scale I choose. That is actually coming directly from the Mod Dwarf and there are generators here where you can build synthesizers. In fact I use Dext a lot which is the DX7 VST or I, I don't know the digital synth but it's a replica and it works really well uh, and it's got a bunch of pre-programmed you know FM sounds in there already. Uh, so this is, this just has, I think right now I have 202 plugins installed. Uh, I can't tell you a lot about a lot of them, mostly because I'm very set in the type of sounds that I like to generate, so I know what plugins I like to use. And from time to time I will experiment. I do think that uh, there is a lot that I can still learn about this device and I'm going to grow into it for sure. So. This is just hands down the best multi effects pedal that I've ever had. And uh, I originally had the Zoya. And the Zoya was a great thing, but I hated the user interface. I much prefer having a big GUI like this. This, this right here, just zoom in and out. You can open them up, change the parameters, map them to wherever you want on the device. Uh, and you can really have full control of your board on the front page if you really wanted to. Uh, the Dwarf is a little bit more limited than Duo X uh, and the fact that obviously it's got about half the controls and I'm feeling pretty confident that if I had a Duo X this entire pedal board could be mapped to the main page just one go since there's so many more knobs and buttons and stuff. Uh, but yeah uh, so this is the Mod Dwarf, and this is this is like one of the effects chains that I've done, and you can make all sorts of pedal boards, as you can tell, um, and people upload them onto the pedal board libraries. Uh, you can go uh, check the plugin store, but if you're looking for for pedal boards, for sure, just you can go in and go browse online, and bam, right here, you have the ability to throw it in here. So this is a uh, very, very cool, very cool setup. Highly recommend it. Great company, great people to work with. Uh, they're always excited to see what people are doing. And uh, since I'm not recording, I figured I would kind of talk a little bit about it and, uh, you know, show that it actually has some really good sound. Uh, surprisingly good. I love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm hoping down the road I'll be able to do some more in-depth videos of this. I got to work on my camera setup. And uh, I didn't have the foresight to purchase a second boom arm for my microphone. So uh, I need to do that. And I can actually get good audio <laughs> hooked back up. So hopefully 
I'll be able to do a voiceover on this and uh, push forward. Thanks for watching. Peace. Well, okay. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I obviously did not do a voiceover. It was a little bit out of my skill set at this time, and this was the uh, first time I've attempted to do any sort of like full-length video editing, uh, cutting in and splicing audio, and uh, all of my color corrections and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to get a little bit more fluent and confident uh, within my video editing as well as my presentation style. Perhaps uh, I'll start using some cue cards instead of rambling on. But Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, I can't wait to do more of these videos. Uh, I'm planning on some more videos later on this week, but that's going to be centered around the Polyum Tracker, and that'll be for a buddy of mine in a synthesizer server that I've been interacting with for quite some time. Um, other than that, may tears good hand guide you, and may the wind fill your sails. Peace.